Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Mutraja here back with a new video lesson for y'all. In today's lesson, I want to talk about playing bass solos using just the major scale and the pentatonic scale. I know there must be a bunch of you going, woo! Because um, this is like every bass player's territory, right? But what can we actually do with these two scales to really spice things up? Is it possible to play solos that are entirely based off of these two scales? Yeah, it is. Very much possible. In fact, I find myself leaning on the sound a lot more lately because um, there's so much more melodic depth to it. I'm not saying the melodic minor or the diminished scales don't have much to offer in that sense, they do. Those melodies are beautiful. Um, but sometimes all you want is just something that sings and that is something you find with the major scale or the pentatonic scale. All right, so I've got a little loop here I'm gonna do a little play along to. I'm gonna do my best to use pure pentatonic scales and major scales and I might start to open up and I just want you to try to pay attention to what happens when I start to open up and how I still come back to the major and the pentatonic scales to just ease it instead of going full-on intense melodic minor or diminished ideas all right here we go moments there I'm gonna leave this I'm not gonna do another take um, I love making mistakes it really assures me that I'm trying to do something that is fighting me fighting my body fighting my instincts and that is very important when you're trying to get better okay so the chord progression here um, it's a G flat major B flat minor to a B major then goes to a D major to an A major and then G um, on the chords, I didn't necessarily put sevenths all the time, but you can treat all the majors as major sevenths if you want. Then D major seven, A major seven, G major seven. Okay, so for the first half, we are kind of in the tonality of G flat major. Mm -hmm. 
we can use the E flat minor pentatonic, which is also the G major pentatonic. Um, now, when it goes to the D major 7 and A major 7, I can look at that as an F sharp minor pentatonic. And then on the G major 7, I can still use the same pentatonic scale. It gives a nice sound. It sings. You can use the E minor, obviously. But you almost notice immediately it's such a generic sound compared to the F sharp minor. Okay. Now what's really cool is that even though the second half of the progression almost has nothing to do with the first half, the tonality change is actually just major and minor. If you don't follow what I'm saying, so what I said earlier is that the first half is G flat major pentatonic, E flat minor pentatonic, G flat is F sharp. So we're doing G flat major and then F sharp minor. The reason I'm doing the flat and sharp is because D major, A major, G major, they are sharp. They have sharps in them, whereas the G flat and the others have flats. Um, that's how musically, um, from a education standpoint, that's how we refer to them, and harmonic equivalents, really. So, if I want to make it simpler, F sharp major, F sharp minor. These are the two pentatonic scales that I try to focus on. And of course, I have the E minor pentatonic. Um, since G major, on that chord, I also have B minor pentatonic. Um, what else could I use? On the D major 7 to A major 7, I can use C sharp minor pentatonic. Okay? So, G major pentatonic, G flat. Then F sharp minor or G flat minor. E minor. B minor. C sharp minor. Okay? Another cool one we can use Borrowing that F sharp minor pentatonic over G major 7 is to play F minor pentatonic over the G flat major. Okay, so if I think about it, I have E flat minor pentatonic, E, F, F sharp. I have four minor pentatonics in a half step sequence going up. Okay, now I'm going to emphasize these four pentatonic scales and play over the loop. E flat minor pentatonic. F sharp. F. G flat. F sharp. E flat. F, E flat, E, Okay, it's actually harder than it looks uh, to keep track of these pentatonics, but I tried my best to circle between these four. Um, they don't necessarily come in an order, but you have to juggle between them. And that's where phrasing comes into the equation, how you choose to uh, pick your notes to move between these ideas. <coughs> now, major scale. So, needless to say, you have G flat major scale. Um, and then D major 7 to A major 7, we can treat it as an A major scale going to G major scale. Or actually, G Lydian, which would be D major. So, you have three sets of major scales. Okay, I'm going to use just those three. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Over there, I went for a different scale on the G flat major 7. I went for this Lydian sound, which would make it a D flat major. Okay, now you might think, why am I refraining from using mode names? Um, I did do a couple of lessons in the past, I believe, where I talk about the relevance of actually practicing modes and the relevance of actually practicing just the major scale from different starting points. Okay, now um, if you want to know more about this, I'm actually releasing an ebook that's coming pretty soon. It's an introduction, like a basic to jazz vocabulary builder, building. Um, and I talk almost exclusively about the major scale, using the major scale to use ideas to create solos. Now, if I want to use just pentatonic scales and major scales, there's nothing wrong with it, okay? A lot is in how you actually phrase it. So, um, I talk about all these key things in the book, so you can stay updated following my Instagram or checking out my website. Um, it should be out in the next couple of weeks, maximum. All right, so that's all for this lesson. I also did a lesson in the past about phrasing using scales and connection points. I'm going to put that link in the description below. I really feel like jamming out before I wrap up this lesson. So I'll see you guys in the, in the shed until the next one. Peace. Thank you.